Well, the moon, what a mystery. One of the uh, miracles uh, about life on the planet Earth is that the diameter of the moon in the sky and the diameter of the sun in the sky are almost exactly the same. And so this is one of the few planets in the galaxy where you can actually see a total solar eclipse. Most other worlds, the moon of, of the planet would be smaller or bigger, and, but here they just line up and we get that incredible corona. And right away that tells us something important, that the, the moon and the sun are, are equal at least in diameter. And immediately we begin to think of the basic dualities of the universe, of yin and yang, of hot and cold, of, of uh, uh, wet and dry, male and female. Duality, the hermetic principles. Now, moon holds up half of all of that. The moon represents half of that entire gestalt. Now, if we uh, attend an astrology conference and we, we say, uh, what does the moon mean? I, I'm a beginning astrologer. And we might very well hear uh, that the moon is your feelings, the, uh, the moon is your heart, your emotional body. And that is completely accurate. But it doesn't go far enough. The moon embraces so much more than that. Uh, speaking in terms of, of feeling, though, one way to say it, one of my favorite ways to say it, is the moon represents your mood averaged over a lifetime. The, the last phrase is the important one because we all have good days and bad days and so on. But you have a friend, for example, who's always serious. You know, a good person, a fine friend, but you, you make a joke and the person doesn't realize you're joking until you explain that it was a joke. We all know people like that. And, and the, the mood of that life is serious. And okay, there's a serious moon. There are various ways that can be represented astrologically. The moon in Capricorn. Capricorn, for example. You have another friend who is lighthearted and, and makes everything into a joke, no matter how serious you're trying to be. The moon of a clown, maybe, maybe more Sagittarian. Now, as soon as I assign signs to moods like that, I, I, I'm immediately on shaky ground. In, in principle, those are accurate and useful statements about the, the, the way the sign uh, suffuses the moon the, with a certain feeling. That feels accurate, but of course everything in astrology has to be taken in context and a full understanding of the moon involves well, what house is it in, what aspects does it make, what does the rest of the chart look like. But here in this talk I want to focus very specifically on the moon. And so our first principle, moon as heart or feelings, the moon as the mood of the life averaged over a lifetime. Uh, another word, just a single word for exactly the same principle, would be somebody's attitude. Everybody has an attitude. Now, as we, we think about the word attitude, it absolutely flavors our, our sense of reality. Like if, if a person's attitude tends to be negative, a, a kind of depressive attitude, you, you show them uh, a plan and all they see is what's wrong with it. They only see the impossibilities. Now, some of what they're seeing may be quite accurate and right and helpful, but it is the nature of that attitude of negativity that we look at reality and only see it as a matrix of obstacles. Somebody else might have an attitude that is more optimistic and they will see possibility and hope, which sounds great, but of course they might miss seeing the obstacles. The point that I'm getting to here, and it's a very important one, it takes the moon beyond the realm of feelings and we begin to recognize that the moon significantly shapes our entire sense of reality. Moon represents intuitive functions. Everything that slips through the nets of quantitative measurement can be understood as lunar. So love or meaning, 
I mean, these are, of course, beautiful concepts. What would life be without love and without meaning? But we can't measure them. We, we can't be quantitatively scientific about those things. And so the moon covers everything that really gives meaning to life or makes life meaningful. And some of that is in the category of magic and wonder and enchantment and faith. Those are not words that you so often hear with the moon, but they're very much a part of it. Everything beyond the realm of reason or logic. Now that realm of reason and logic is basically the solar realm. I was speaking of the, the basic duality uh, when I first began talking about all this. And moon is half of it, sun is the other half of it. Here we're focusing on the moon. So heart, soul, magic, wonder, meaning, enchantment, a lot of possibilities there intuitive experiences. We just feel something in our bones, in the marrow of my bones. I know that we will be friends forever, for example. That is, that's a lunar statement. What do we mean by the marrow of the bones? Obviously, that's not to be taken literally, but it is connected to the spirit of the moon. To know someone intimately, to reveal ourselves intimately, is to reveal the moon to reveal our moods and our attitudes and, and the nature and condition of our heart. There's another fundamental piece with the moon. I can say it very simply. Taking care of the moon is the secret of eternal happiness. Uh, I, I smile when I put it that way. It sounds almost pretentious, but, but being true to your heart, being true to your soul, doesn't that sound like the secret of happiness? You know, if somebody is taking care of the sun, but not the moon, they may be sane and they may be productive, but they don't have much of a sense of meaning in life. So there's more moon energy. I would add another layer, kind of derives from what I just said. Moon is deeply connected with how we take care of ourselves. Moon is the, related to the mother archetype often, but the, the mother inside us, the, the, the moon in you is the part of you that you wake up one Thursday morning and you don't feel very good. Maybe, maybe you have a little bit of a sore throat and the moon is the part of you that says, maybe I've come down with something, I'll take my temperature. And I see a little bit of a fever on the thermometer and I, I realize I, I, I should lie in bed and I, I call into work and I, I say, I'm sick, I, I need to take care of myself. And then we say one more thing on, on the phone to work and it's so telling. We say, I wouldn't want to give this to anybody. In other words, to infect somebody with whatever the cold or, or flu symptoms are that, that I have. So the way we take care of ourselves gently is reflected typically in the way we take care of other people as well. So the moon carries a quality of nurturing and a quality of kindness, both when it's aimed inward in terms of self-care and also when it is aimed outward into the world of, of other people. So everything's soft in life, everything's sweet in life. Needless to say, under the patriarchy, the moon was a girl and the sun was a boy. I, I say it in a silly way because I want to be dismissive of it. I've, I've seen thousands and thousands of birth charts in the course of my long career in this field. I've never seen a man who lacked a moon or a woman who lacked a sun. End of story as far as I'm concerned. I don't like assigning gender to the moon or the sun. I think it just feeds into the old belief system that we're all trying to get past. And instead, let's reclaim our wholeness, regardless of what gender we happen to be. So there is a, a brief introduction to the moon. And this quality that I've talked about exists in everybody. Some people, the moon is bigger, more prominent, like it's rising. Other people, the moon's hiding out in a corner. But everybody has a heart, a soul, and an attitude. Everybody has a path to happiness. Everybody has certain methods of self-care. And this is always the moon. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the moon is conditioned by a tremendous variety of factors. The sign it's in, the house it's in, any aspects that it makes, the phase of the moon is a tremendously important thing. I, I cover all of this uh, in as much detail as I could muster in a, a book I wrote a few years ago called The Book of the Moon. 
If you're interested in pursuing this, the full detail is in there. Lunar declination, how far above or below the celestial equator the moon is. All these things are important. But what I want to focus on here is perhaps the most basic and most primal, a piece without which we simply cannot even begin to understand the nature of this moon function in a person. And that is the sign that the moon happened to be in at the time you were born. We'll focus on that. As we dive into this, I want to talk about the moon in Aries and the moon in Taurus and so on, and go into some detail uh, about each one of them. But as we do this, re remember, uh, your mileage may vary, so to speak. As I speak of an Aries moon, for example, maybe you have one, and I, I, I'd be surprised if you couldn't relate rather directly to much of what I say. But I would also recognize that if you have nine planets in Pisces, or if you have nine planets in Sagittarius, that Aries moon is, is going to feel rather different. Context is, is so, so critically important. But here we understand how the lunar archetype varies as it interacts with the 12 fundamental archetypes that we call the signs of the zodiac.